Harken back to Faith Promise, a study that does not seem wants to go away, but that we must study as we do this study from the Liberty Bible Course on Practical Christian Living, Money Part 2. We've been studying now for 18 pages of this book. You can get the name and address and order these books yourself. I'll give it to you at the end of this video. We've been studying now through 19 pages of Faith Promise. No study has taken so much time as something that's going on in the churches today. And you need to go back and listen and watch the previous videos as when this started. As this started with the lessons of money. How to handle your money as a Christian and we build into now. Uh, don't know how long we've been talking about faith promise, but we come to the next part, which we're going to finish, misleading statement number five. And if I'm saying misleading statement number five means we've had four others. And you need to go back and watch the videos. I'm not even going to review because the videos are there to watch and take notes. Again, you need a King James Bible. The answers will be wrong if you don't. I challenge you to contact Liberty Bible Course and get these books and get all the books they have. They're interesting. They're great. They talk about hell, heaven, proper dress. But let's move on. Misleading statement number five. Saying that no one will ever try to and collect from you the faith promise offering. You need to go back and listen. Just don't jump in this thing and and merit a, a thought or a opinion. Listen to it all. Get the book. Notice. Once again, the following statement. And I quote. An effort is normally made to collect the pledge. No attempt is ever made to collect the faith promise. If at the end of the pr promise period, usually one year, the person is unable to fulfill his or her faith promise commitment, the matter is wholly between the person and God, end of quote, and I'll give you the Global Missionary Evangelism website so you can find this on this video. And those that are listening to this on uh, Sermon uh, Network, you can go to my YouTube uh, page and you can see all this. You can see my ugly face as you study the Word of God. Give yourself nightmares. This statement is not made in spirit and in truth. Because a pastor has heard church members severely rebuked in faith promise missions meetings when the previous year's promises total were not met. The people are preached at that they lied to God last year, and that they robbed God, and that they need to pay up to God what you promised. What's going on there? I'm going to give an even number again. Even numbers are great. The church, faith promised $1,000 for the whole year. And when the year comes to the end, you only collected $800 for whatever reason. Then the preacher gets up in the pulpit and starts slamming you guys. Because you didn't come up with a thousand dollars. Because now I got to go back to my preacher friends. Look at the last video. I told them my church will give a thousand dollars. Now I got to go tell them that we only gave eight hundred. I got to go tell my friends. No, the average church using faith promise giving will not come to your door demanding that you pay up. But you will surely hear it from the pulpit. If the money is not coming in like it was promised, there is deceitful means of trying to collect the money that was emphasized from the previous year as no strings are attached. Well, my people, you said you'd get up there and you'd give faith promise. And I don't check the books. I don't see any record of giving or anything like that. But I see that we have a problem of giving of the faith promise that we are lacking. 
I know that people have moved away, and I know that people in the economy have lost jobs thanks to that weird old Obama in the White House and all that. I know situations are tough, but you said you would give a thousand dollars, and a thousand dollars has not been given, and 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 I'm gonna have to go back to my people and cry to them, say, uh, I lied. And then you'll hear preaching why you did not give your faith promise. All right, now we're done with that one. Letter D, A, B, C, D, that's four. This is four accounts so far. Letter D, unscriptural results. Now, I just want to go run out and take part of this in a church with unscriptural. Let me give you an illustration on the scripture before we go into the study. This is me now. This is not in the book. What would be on scripture? If I come knocking on your door and tell you, say, listen, open up the book of Genesis, tell you you need to build an ark to be saved in your families. It's in the Bible. How about... I'm not even going to go any further. Unscriptural results means, let me get this for you, means it's not scriptural. Many methods are accepted and followed by people because they seem to be so successful. But some things take time to show the bad side effects from them. That first cigarette. That third hundred and fifty six cigarette, that one thousand cigarette, may not show lung cancer, but keep doing it long enough. That man that steps out on his wife, no one knows. He keeps doing it, he's going to get caught. But see, what you don't realize is the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Number one, pride is a result of the faith promise giving system. Now, you find me somewhere in the Bible where God and pride go hand in hand. You won't find it. As a matter of fact, I heard an idiot one time say that God had pride in his son. And you need to sit down and shut up and never open up your mouth again from a pulpit. I'll tell you what God says when he's pleased with something. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. God never has pride. Proud to be American and flush you down the toilet, aren't you? Because God hates it. You can't say God bless America and then have the pride. And you're so stupid to realize that everything now is made in China. Try to find something that's made in, in the USA that's not going to break down within a year. A. Pride amongst preachers. You think that guy behind a pulpit you're listening to, you think every preacher that gets up and preaches, let me say, you think all the preachers are saved, you need another hole in your head. You think all the preachers that get up and preach are going to heaven. I've got some land for you down the swamps of Florida. You have not read 2 Corinthians 11 where it speaks about Satan and his ministers. Now, if you can't find anywhere in the Bible with, pr with pride and God and God and pride, what do you think when you got a preacher that has pride? What do you think he's of? The devil, I think, is expression is. Let's get back. Consider Oswald J. Smith, and this is the guy we keep quoting from. His statement again, and I quote, 
Oswald J. Smith says, I quote, I would never go back to the cash offering. With a cash offering, I could only get very little. But with a faith promise offering, I can get much, period, end of quote. Since when did God ever call preachers to raise money? Find me one. Paul says, I robbed other churches so that I could be at your church and minister to what you couldn't help me with. Paul and Priscilla and Aqua, he would go out and, and do the tent business to, to raise the money he needed for the stuff that he needed in his life. He didn't sell tickets. He didn't sell manure. He didn't sell uh, junk. He didn't sell cookies. He didn't have a bazaar. He didn't have a church yard sale, a church garage sale, a church dance, church movies. How does Oswald J. Smith statement fit in the qualifications for a pastor? Well, let's look it up. As you can turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3. So we got a pride among pastors. What is the pride? What is the raising the money? And then they turn around and say, I live by faith. Please give more money. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, I do, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless. Yeah, I love this one. The husband of one wife. What if you got a preacher at? You got a woman up there, and every 29 days she gives you hellfire preaching. Is she, is she the husband of one wife? Now I'm afraid to say that today with these with this. Now you know you can marry sodomites and all that, and the church is welcome. There's somewhere probably now there's some lesbian up in the pulpit who does have a wife, and now they say, yep, she's qualified. You are wicked. Well, that's not our study. Yeah, vigilant. Sober. That means serious. That doesn't mean he's not in the hiccup Jew. Even though he shouldn't be in the hiccup Jew. Of good behavior. I know a preacher spends his money like crazy and doesn't give a crap about it. Given to hospitality. Apt to teach. Teach, teach. You should be able to teach you something. How many of you sheep go to, go to these churches? You come out of there, you know, ad nourish, you skin to the bones. Not given to wine. Not a striker. I knew a preacher one time, he, he, he boasted in starting fights. Not greedy of filth of liqueur. That means he's not in it, he, he's not out to get money. But patient. Ooh, I hate that one. Because I'm not patient. Not a brawler. Not covetous. He doesn't have his mind on advertisement. doesn't have his mind on, oh, what can I get next? One that ruins well his own house. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Listen, your children are not well. What are you doing in the pasture? You better make sure your children are doing well. I know a lot of men like that. Not a novice. At least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them that without. At least he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Where in that list is the qualifications listed that said a preacher must be good at raising money? Go back and read it. No, it's not. None. He's apt to teach. 
But it never says a church should look for a pastor who is apt to raise money or a lot of money. And when you go back to the churches in the book of Acts, they met in houses. There wasn't no buildings or anything like that. And the money that was raised in the book of Acts were to help other Christians. Jews who their lives had been totally turned upside down for believing the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Who now has no job, has no home, has no family. Where do you see Peter, James, and John and Jesus marching around collecting money? If you want to see where they're collecting money, I mean, listen, Jesus told Peter to go down, you know, catch a fish, open up his mouth, there's a coin in there for taxes. But nowhere. In fact, when money is mentioned in regard to the pastor, a warning is given. Not greedy of filthy liqueur. How come these preachers get up and they want you to give all you can give to faith promise? Can I ask a question off of the record? As a member of a church that does this, how do you know that that money actually goes to where it's said to be going? Listen, just because you tell me, say, listen, here's $100, I want you to go and put this in whatever. Just because I say yes doesn't mean... We've already seen lies. We've already seen deception. Consider Oswald J. Smith's statement again, and I quote, I would never go back to a cash offering. With a cash offering, I could only get very little, but with a faith promise offering, I can get much, period, end of quote. What is the definition of the word greedy? Having or showing a selfish desire for wealth and possessions. Merriam Westford's Dictionary. Someone will immediately point out that Oswald J. Smith was not greedy, but just wanted to raise money for missions. His motives are not what is being judged here, but his method is, and the outcome of his method. To see if Oswald J. Smith's method produces the spirit of the definition of the word greedy, I quote, a selfish desire for wealth, unquote, or whether it brings glory to God, let us do a little test. In this following statement, count how many times the word God appeared and is glorified, and how many times the word I or we appear. Now, I want you to count God on your left hand. That's this one. And I want you to count I or we on the right hand. That's this one. Ready? I'll read this slow. And I will quote this at the end of the video. I. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Stop. Raise your fingers. Quote, here's the quote, I would never go back to the cash offering, period. With a cash offering, I could only get a very little comma, but with a faith promise offering, I can get much, period. In our annual mission, missionary convention, we never get more than $7,000 in cash, but we get a quarter of a million or more in faith promises, period, end of quote. How many times was the word of God, excuse me, 
How many times was the word God used in the statement? Zero. That's that's Zilcho right there. The donut. How many times was the word I or we used? Five. You know what five is in the Bible? Death. When worldly means are used to raise money, the glory always goes to man and not God. <clears throat> the money raised may be used for God, but the glory cl clearly goes to man. Read his statement again. I will quote it at the end of this video. Proverbs 11.2 says, When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 16.18-19 says, Pride goeth before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Illustration. A pastor began noticing how common it is today in promotional literature from churches to advertise the value of the church property where a special speaker, speaker for his pastors, let me try it again. A pastor began noticing how common it is today in promotional literature from churches to advertise the value of the church property where a special preacher, special speaker pastor or did pastor. The same is true for faith promise giving. It may mention the amount that the particular church raised in year, for missions before that pastor came and how much it presently is or was when it, when he left whether known, knowingly or unknowingly financial matters in the church today are being used to glorify man instead of God your preacher may be taking what you're doing and going to other preachers and other churches and boasting about what you guys are doing and not even giving your names. Probably saying, my church. You know what my church did? I gave such a great uh, sermon and gave such great thing from the pulpit that my people are given it is showing us that there is a problem in the church when the success or failure of a pastor is measuring amount of money that he has raised in his years ministry instead of his faithful preaching the word of God I was told the other day that, uh, that, that there's a church somewhere and you don't need to know you don't need to care they vote on the pastor every year. Why? Because if he doesn't work out, it doesn't bring enough money, doesn't bring enough people and all that, then we can, you know, get rid of him and bring someone who's going to. And then when he fails, we can get rid of him and bring someone else who's going to do. I just heard, and I don't believe it, I'm sorry. I just heard seven people got saved. But on the web page, on their Facebook, not one time has it been mentioned. I even talked to a person recently involved in what that event that just happened and didn't even say, hey, guess what? What? People got saved. But oh, if you were, were to play. 35 came on this day, and 25 came on this day, and blah, 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 blah. It's all about numbers. It's not about the Lord. I don't care about how many came. I want to know what the Holy Spirit did. Acts 
You gotta realize that there are pastors out there in churches today. They're either of God or they're of Satan. You've got to come to that conclusion. You must know that. Now I'm going to tell you something. A good Bible-believing, God-honoring pastor is not going to give you sugar as a diet all the time. Because then you become a diabetic church. And there are people who die of diabetes. There are people who get diabetes who lose their feet and can't walk for Jesus no more. I know. Because of diabetes, one of my bones in my toes has been removed. Thank God it wasn't the foot. And all sugary messes, all sugary uh, church events is damaging. It's good to have some sweets. But you need bread. You need milk. You need meat. You need salt. Acts 6.4 tells us what the early pastors were going to do. But we gave ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Now when is there prayer in the churches? Why is it even called prayer night before anymore? You get one guy up and he prays and that's it. And we go on with a message. Prayer is lacking. Did you notice anything said there about raising money in Acts 6-4? For the church or for the church project? No. They were going to pray about it and preach the word. Prayer is one of the answers for financial needs. Not fundraising schemes. You can get a bag of mulch in one of the churches and you know, help them with one, whatever they're trying to raise money. And then you get the unsaved who buys that mulch saying, oh, I'm a pretty good person. I gave my money to buy the mulch for the church or whatever they were doing, so God will put that down the records. I'm a good little doobie. So you think that guy who walked right away, he thinks he's doing good in the eyes of the Lord because I bought mulch from a church. I'm going to tell you what's coming out of the church today. Fertilizer. From the golden calf. I like to say another word, but I can't. Preaching the word is one of the answers for financial needs. That God may stir hearts to give and lay up treasures in heaven. Instead of treasures on the earth. Spirit-filled preaching and prayer to the Lord of the harvest is what is needed to help missionary effort, not fundraising schemes. The same is true when a church needs to build. Now, I don't know. Or maybe. Let's. Let's go one more page. Two more pages. Letter B. We talked about the pride of preachers. I think we're going to stop right there. I'll let you hang in the balance about the pride of the church members for next week. Listen, when something brings pride into a church house, you not need to be there. When you start boasting about man, over God. There's a serious problem. Isaiah chapter 14, I believe it is, where Lucifer speaks. How many times did we count? Oh boy, I'm going to go here. I or we was used five times, wasn't it? 
I'm going to go over Isaiah chapter 14. Let's see number 5 show up again. Isaiah 14, verse 12. Now, I want you to count the eyes here. Isaiah 14, verse 12, is Lucifer before he fell, became Satan, the devil, the liar, the red dragon. Now count with me the eyes. <clears throat> How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, now this is Satan speaking. Imagine the Holy Bible quoting Satan. Did you know that? Did you know your Bible quotes Satan? We're going to read, and I quote Satan. Watch the pride. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set also upon the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. Did you count? There were five I wills of Lucifer speaking. I will be somebody. I will be above God. I will. I, 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 I. You know another man that used the word I a lot in his speeches? Adolf Hitler. And someone is counting them all. I thought it was all about God. Pride is not of God. Proud, haughty, heady. Look who I am. Look what I am. We're number one. I'm on the streets. I preach on the streets, and I look at front license plates to real, you know, who down here. I mean, we preach to Connecticut, Missouri, Ohio, all around. It amazes me when you see these sports license plates. And you get this one particular sport, and the license plate says, I'm the number one fan. Well, 45 cars later, here comes the same license plate with a different car, a different person says, I'm their number one fan. And then two weeks later, you know, here comes the same, here comes the same license plate, same team. I'm, wait a minute. You, so stupid. You're not the number one fan. I just read it in 26 license plates. But you think you're somebody because... Sin originated with Lucifer saying, I will, five times. And in Ezekiel, he says that he is the king over all the children of Christ. The proper way, if you want to give to missionaries, is the first thing is you give 10%. That's the very first thing. I give over. The very first check I write, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's tithes by percentage, it's over 10%. And then I do the bills. And I have a set amount for missionaries. I don't even know how many missionaries I support. I don't promise nothing. Because after I give my tithes, that, that's settled. Then missionaries are later. There may be a problem where I may need that money that for that missionary. And I think the missionary, if he's a God-honored man, would understand that, you know, if you've given faithfully for two or three years to me, and then one month you didn't give, you might have need, needed the money. And brother, I forgive you and, you know, pray for you. 
But if I make a promise, as this faith promise goes on, now let's talk you and me. Let's forget faith promise for a minute. Let's say I promise to be over your house with lunch Friday afternoon. I will come over to your house. I'm making a promise Friday afternoon to be over to your house. And I'll bring lunch and drinks and a dessert. Say 1 o'clock. That is my promise to you. Well, first of all, I didn't put Lord willing. But let's say the promise. Come Friday, I have to dish out money for something that I did not see was coming. So I don't have enough money. But I get just the food. That's all I can afford. Can't bring the drinks. Couldn't afford it. Well, I'm on my way to your house at 1 o'clock. There's a traffic accident and the road is shut down. And there's no detours. I'm in a spot where I can't turn around. I can't go down any. I, I got to sit in traffic. So I show up at your house at 2 or 3 o'clock. I broke my promise. Well, you know, between you and him, yeah. But what if I say again another time, well, I'll be over your house, this time I'll bring supper. And, and you're going to be thinking in the back of your mind, well, last time he didn't. Now, if you throw the Lord, I mean, honestly throw in the Lord willing. Because God knows what's going to happen five minutes from now that I don't even know. Never mind. A week, five days. You don't know what's going to happen. And when you sit down to, to write out your checkbook, you may not be able to afford that. I'm going to tell you what's happening too. Let's let's say faith promise honestly. Let's look at it honestly now. The pastor tells the missionaries, "Our church has promised a thousand dollars. We're going to support you guys this month." And you can't do it through faith promise. Well, now that missionary is looking forward in his budget for money that you said was going to come, and now it's not going to come because you're unable to give it. Now you not only became tr untrue to your word, but you put the missionary in a financial band because he was relying on the money that you... It's like going to work. Your boss says, well, we're going to pay you on Friday X amount of dollars. With missionaries, you support them. You do what you can that week, however you do it. But there may be times that you are unable to do it. Do you know where it says in, in Corinthians that if you got $20 for a missionary, do you know where it says if your wife wants to go out to eat because she doesn't want to cook that night, you're, you're to take that $20 and take her out to eat? Do you know that verse? But I faith promise it. Yeah. And then you turn to your wife and children and wonder why they're so unhappy. You promise money that may not be able to be put for. And then brings pride. Next week, we'll look at the pride of church member. I wouldn't be involved in anything with pride. Plain and simple. 